When it comes to virtual reality, there are two systems at the moment that should be on your radar, the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. They've been out for a few months now, with each offering their unique take at the VR experience. Even though their implementations are different, at the end of the day, however, it's all about which one does it better. Of course, other factors will influence the outcome, but we'll go into some of their strengths and weaknesses in this comparison. The first part takes us to design, where there's a clear winner here, and that's the Oculus Rift. Why is that, you ask? Well, quite simply, it's straightforward, easy to adjust, it features integrated headphones, and it feels significantly more lightweight. These are hallmark qualities we'd want in a VR headset, and the Rift definitely delivers them. On top of that, there's a more refined quality about the Rift's design. It looks more like a finished product, whereas with the HTC Vive's industrial design, it can still be mistaken for a prototype of some kind. We also like that the Rift has built-in headphones, which articulate a bit and sound really good. Right now, the two systems are still tethered because of the cables that are connected to them, and those are the HDMI and USB connections. With the Rift, it's not as obtrusive because the two are fitted through a single, thicker wire. For the Vive, however, there are actually a total of three wires connected in series that are coming off the headset. These interconnected wires can limit the Vive's movement just because they're so stiff and get in the way at times. Moving on to the setup process, the Rift is once again our preferred choice because it's quick and easy. In fact, it took us a mere 15 minutes to finish, whereas with the Vive, it took us around an hour. To be fair though, there's a disparity here because we opted to wall mount the two base stations with the Vive, as opposed to just placing them on a high ledge or something. Of course, you can save time by doing that, but we wanted something that would be higher and generate a wider coverage for the tracking. Another reason why the Vive is longer to configure is because you have to map out your playing area. Conversely with the Rift, all you need to do is just place the single infrared sensor in front of wherever you intend on using the Rift. As for the controllers, the Rift has two options, the Xbox One gamepad or the mini remote. Most time you'll use the Xbox One gamepad since it has all the functions of the mini remote. Meanwhile, the Vive controllers are very different. They don't look like most controllers, but it's pretty incredible how they literally become your hands in the VR world. When it comes to the VR experience, this is where the HTC Vive truly separates itself from the Oculus Rift. The Vive's higher level immersion is unprecedented, to the point that you actually feel like you're thrown into another world. Now this is due to how it's able to track spatial movement accurately, like being able to hold onto an object or kneeling down to steady a shot with a bow and arrow. The Vive is simply unrivaled. Don't get us wrong, the Rift is still equipped in providing a tangible VR experience, but since it lacks the whole room interaction, it still feels a bit tethered and limited. Many of the games and demos, in fact, can be experienced from the comforts of a sitting position, usually at your computer desk area. Now, in their current incarnations, the HTC Vive is unequivocally the VR experience worth checking out. Looking at the horizon though, the Oculus Touch controls will add a whole new element to the Rift's VR experience. It's cool because you're going to get independent articulation with your fingers in the VR world, but even with that, the Rift still won't have that whole room interaction. When they first launched, we found that the Oculus Rift had a better library of games and content. Over time, however, the Vive's library has grown to include some killer titles that showcases how developers are harnessing the VR potential of the system. Nowadays, there's a decent pool of shared titles between them. However, we're seeing more titles for the Vive where developers are mixing up the gameplay with the Vive's unique tracking. The two systems are pretty much on par with one another with their catalogs. There's not really one system we feel that offers more exclusives than the other. Pricing is always a determining factor for most people, especially when they have a tight budget. The Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive are selling for $600 and $800 respectively, so that's a modest $200 difference between them, and that's not including the cost of a PC rig capable of handling them, which would be at the very least an additional $500 cost. All told, we're looking at over $1,000 to jump right into virtual reality. Given their high cost to begin with, the $200 you'd spend additionally to get the Vive over the Rift is something that we feel is validated by the Vive's deeper VR experience. 
When I think about it, the rip is that one small step over what we've been seeing with mobile VR, but the vibe is what we feel to be that giant leap. Sure, we'll see some cool additions, accessories, and enhanced experience that could potentially bridge the gap for the Rift, but in its current state, your hard-earned money is better spent on the Vive. Alright everyone, this is John V. Hope you like this video. These are the two best VR systems you could buy right now. With fall coming, we'll have a third option with the PlayStation VR, so it's going to be interesting to see how the landscape changes then. But in the meantime, if you want to learn about any of the devices I talked about here in the video, you can check out our website at VR Source, your source for all kinds of reality.